Okay, question seven, folks. Carmine is a red pigment found in a precipitation reaction. And then you have quite a detailed picture of what's going on here. Okay, carmine can be removed from the reaction mixture by filtration. Suggest how the filtration could be carried out to ensure fast separation. So this is from the research in chemistry. Um, what you're going to use is a Buchner funnel, but you're not going to get the mark just for seeing a Buchner funnel. Okay, you need to see that that's under vacuum filtration. Oh, vacuum filtration. Um, you could draw a little picture of it, which would be to have your, your Buchner set up into a conical, being careful that actually everything works in this. So that should kind of be coming down here through the, through the actual bung and you've got your suction would be here. So that'd be hooked up to your water normally. Okay. Explain how a sigma bond is formed. It's a bit of a gift. Okay. So that is end on overlap of the orbitals. Okay. Um, a pi bond is formed as a result of sp2. Explain what's meant by sp2. Okay, so you have to be precise here. So what we're doing is we are we are merging and then splitting effectively three orbitals. So you need to see what they are. So we've got an s plus two p orbitals. are merged to split. Okay. Carmine contains a conjugated system. Explain fully how this conjugated system gives rise to the red colour of carmine. Okay, so conjugated systems, we are talking about this. Okay, we are talking about the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. So what we have is the same thing we normally have in colour. Okay, so we've got absorption in the opposite side to the colour you see. Okay, so that I went and got the um, colour wheel. Let's bring this up a little bit. Okay, so we are seeing red. Okay, so we are seeing this colour here. So the actual absorption was in the blue-green. So you need to be that precise. So absorption in the blue-green. means you see, oh, means uh, you see the complementary. Complementary red. Okay. Right. Use of carmine as a dye was largely abandoned in the 19th century. One of the pigments used to replace carmine is alizarin. Okay. Alizarin can be extracted from the root of a plant using methanol. Explain why methanol is a suitable solvent for this extraction. Now, I was almost tempted when I first looked at it to say, well, because it dissolves. But then I think that's not even, I think I went and checked the marks and went, well, way too simple. Okay, so here's your methanol. This is the important thing. You have the potential for hydrogen bonding to this. So that's why it will actually work as a solvent. And you're going to have to be that precise. Okay, um, you could say lots of other ways of saying that because you could say that you've got um, similar polarities involved, um, but I expect you to be able to see that this is this is where it would link. Okay, you'll notice I've gone and got some other stuff from the data book, so here we go. Infrared spectrum shown below. Explain the effect the infrared radiation has on the bonds within the molecule and how this allows different functional groups to be identified worth two marks. So the first point has got to be what it does. Um, so basically it bends them, bends, stretches, vibrates, however you, you, know, you want to say this, um, specific bonds, okay? So each bond is then stretched and that's what we're saying is that different bonds have different frequencies that respond, different frequencies frequencies that they respond to. There's your two marks. Okay. Okay. I apologize for if that looked like it jumped. I decided I needed the picture for this one. Um, I was just going to use the one above. Okay. So a functional group in the structure below that is responsible for the peak at 3395. Okay. So here's your data set over here. Uh, We're looking for 3395. It's going to be in there. Okay, 
it's the hydrogen bonding the OH stretch. So either of these. Okay. Right. Calculation. For the peak at 3395 centimetres to the 1 per centimetre, uh, calculate the wavelength in metres. Okay, so if the wavelength uh, is per centimetre, what I'm going to have to do is to flip it over. So I'm going to have to do 1 over 3395. Okay, and that is going to give me 0 0.00029455, but this is still in centimetres because this is the per centimetre, I need it in centimetres, so that's the flip. And now I need to shift it into metres, so I'm going to take out two of these zeros, basically. Um, sorry, add two of these zeros in. 2.946 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, um, you could, and I did bring this over, remember we could just times it by 10 to the minus 2 to have got the extra bit in here to get it to metres. Okay, right, the energy in kilojoules per mole associated with this wavelength, so that is your combining your equations to give you E equals LHC over lambda. You've used this loads of times. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times your 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 oh, times 3 times 10 to the 8. All of it on the last page, all this these data. Oh, sorry, and I forgot the, the divide by. Divided by your answer. Okay, should give you uh, 40644. This is in joules though, uh, mainly because of this one, because that's in joules per second. Um, so we want it in kilojoules, it requires it in kilojoules. So we're going to take, divide by a thousand, so we get 40.644. So 40.6. And that's you.